Okay. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So it's eight o'clock in the morning. So we'll begin our lecture series for today. But before we start off, um, let's just spend a moment in silence just to commemorate our brothers and sisters, our colleagues, our friends, and our dearly departed whom we have lost um, in the past. St. John Baptist de la Salle. Pray for us. Live Jesus in our heart. Forever. 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 So good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us in the second lecture of the DLSU Sustainability Lecture Series. So to start us off, I'd like to um, call uh, Dr. Raymond Tan, the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation of De La Salle University, to give us a few words. Thank you very much, Dr. Aviso. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this the second talk of the Sustainability Lecture Series. This series is a joint initiative of De La Salle University based in Manila, Philippines, and the International Association of La Salle Universities, a global network of institutions with the same roots in France. This talk is intended to rally the global La Salle community towards meeting the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the challenges posed by Pope Francis in 2015 in the Laudato Si Encyclical. And of course, we envision that eventually this talk will be given, uh, this series of talks, which are held on the last Wednesday of each month, um, that we would have eventually speakers from different Iyalu institutions. And of course, it's not exclusively for Lasallian institutions, we welcome like-minded colleagues and students and practitioners from all over the world to join us and mount and rally ourselves towards a knowledge-based response to the challenges of sustainable development. Thank you and good morning to everyone. So thank you for that, uh, Dr. Tan. So this sustainability lecture series is being organized by the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research um, of De La Salle University. And so to introduce our speaker of today, I'd like to call the director of CESDAR, Dr. Alvin Colaba. Thank you, Dr. Aviso, uh, Dr. Raymond Tan, and our colleagues uh, in all La Salle schools uh, in the Philippines and around the world. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone from the Philippines, and good evening, you know, somewhere, uh, you know, in other parts of the world. And the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research is uh, based at the Gokongwei College of Engineering at De La Salle University in Manila. It, is it was established back in 2003 to promote, catalyze, and crystallize scientific activities in engineering sciences and technology to achieve strategic advances in complex uh, engineered systems and firm level technologies necessary to sustain our uh, development uh, you know, at the country and of the world. There are uh, over uh, 1,600 uh, publications in Scopus Index journals that have been published by research fellows and scientists uh, of the uh, center. Uh, for this morning, we have a distinguished speaker uh, also from De La Salle University. He is a senior fellow and founding director of the Jesse M. Robredo Institute of Governance at De La Salle University, where he previously served as chair of the political science department and director of the social development research center. He completed his PhD in political science from the University of Hawaii under an East-West Center Fellowship and his BA and MA in political science from the University of the Philippines, Diliman in the Philippines. He has con conducted teaching and research in various universities, including Osaka University, Florida State University, Hiroshima University, University of Reading, Waseda University, and University of Hawaii. He received several fellowships and awards, including the Japan Foundation Short-Term Fellowship, Sumitomo Foundation Research Fellowship, Institute for Energy Systems, Economics and Sustainability, Sustainability Research Fellowship at the Florida State University. The Outstanding Young Scientist Awardee from the National Academy of Science and Technology, the Robert S. McNamara Fellowship from the World Bank. 
Our distinguished speaker was the review editor of the Philippine Political Science Journal from 2001 to 2014. He, his works have appeared in Scopus and ISI index journals, such as Environmental History, Public Affairs, International Review of Public Administration, Asian International Studies Review, Asia Pacific Social Science Review, Security Dialogue, Dialogue and Philippine Political Science Journal. His latest publication is Environmental Movements in the Philippines, Contestation for Justice in the Anthropocene, edited by Paul Jobin, Ming Xiao Ho, and Xin Wang Michael Shao. Um, also Environmental Movements and, Poli and Politics of the Asian Anthropocene, uh, published uh, uh, as a chapter in the Singapore ISEAS Use of Ishak Institute uh, this year. He served in leadership positions in various professional organizations and policy advisory bodies, including head of the Commission on Higher Education Philippines Technical Panel in Political Science from 2020 to 2024, president uh, 2015 to 2017, and member of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Political Science Association, president 2016 to 2018, and vice president 2012 to 2015, of the Local Government Training and Research Institute's Philippine Network, member of the National Leadership Council of Sustainable Development Solutions Network, Philippines, from 2016 to 2019, member of the National Steering Committee of the Open Government Partnership, Philippines, from 2014 to 2019, member of the Council of Senior Fellows of the Development Academy of the Philippines from 2019 to the present, and Vice President of the International Academy of Chief Information Officers since 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my uh, pleasure and honor to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Francisco A. Magno to speak on uh, sustainable development goals, localization, co-production, and knowledge partnerships. Let us all warmly welcome Dr. Magno. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Alvin Kulaba. Alvin is my friend, so he gave me a very nice introduction. So uh, let me uh, share my presentation this morning. So my presentation this morning is on SDG localization, co-production and knowledge partnerships. So you, you have a nice view of uh, the city of Manila there. So I'll be talking about the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, uh, focusing on the localization process. We all know that in 2012, the member states of the United Nations came together in Rio, in what is now called as Rio Plus 20. And they came out with a document called The Future We Want to create a set of goals that would be build on the success of the Millennium Development Co Goals. So uh, it's called Rio Plus 20 because it came 20 years after the Earth Summit in 1992. But what is very significant about Rio Plus 20 is that it resulted in a focused political outcome document, which contains clear and practical measures for implementing sustainable development. It's basically, uh, the start of designing uh, indicators and targets for a sustainable development for a sustainable development agenda 2030. If the Rio, uh, the first uh, Rio summit that was in 1992 was about integrating environmental concerns in development planning, Rio plus 20 is really about focusing on the importance of the, the environment on its own. So it's basically integrating uh, the environmental concerns with human development concerns. So as I mentioned, uh, we can call the SDGs as a successor to the MDGs, but with a big difference. Whereas the MDGs focus on human development issues, on poverty issues, now the agenda is joined. It's about fighting poverty and saving the earth. 
So there are 17 goals for people as well as for the planet. So the 2030 agenda was officially adopted on September 25, 2015 at a United Nations summit attended by over 150 heads of state. Out of the key recommendations in transforming our world, so that is the, the major uh, document that came out from this uh, UN summit, it basically emphasized the need to involve everybody, governments, businesses, communities, education, academe. Everyone has a role to play in making the SDGs a reality. That's why the academe, the universities are very important in this process. Especially because the chief advisor for the SDGs is a professor, Professor J. Uh, Jeffrey Sachs, who founded the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And as you can see in this uh, page of the Sustainable Development so uh, Solutions Network, there is a focus on sustainable cities for these cities to become inclusive, resilient, and connected. So this morning, I will focus on the role of the university in building knowledge partnerships as well as on the localization of the SDGs, specifically in building sustainable cities. In 2015, Professor Jeffrey Sachs came to the country at the very start of the launch of the SDG process, you see the uh, efforts to build the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And the Philippines is right at the thick of this process. So in 2015, Professor Jeffrey Sachs came to the Philippines and uh, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Philippines was formed. And I was very privileged at the time to be invited to be part of the National Leadership Council of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Philippines. So the Philippine government, uh, through its permanent commission in the United Nations, uh, published this in their website. The Philippine government pledged to make the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda a reality and to leave no one behind. What is the Philippine approach to SDG implementation? So it really started as uh, as we all know in the United Nations system, it's the, the, the national government that is really at the front of the uh, efforts to, uh, to uh, develop uh, programs and to pursue the commitment of the government with respect to SDGs. So in this regard, it's the National Economic and Development Authority this is the chief planning agency of the Philippine government. And the, the NEDA is employing a whole of government and whole, whole of society approach to SDG implementation. And for this purpose, the primary catalyst for action is the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022. The Philippine Development Plan is a medium term national planning instrument. So it comes out every, every six years. So it's usually a five-year program because we, we all have, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Philippines, we have elections every six years. So what happened is that the SDGs were integrated into the plan. So let me emphasize that while government is both a catalyst and mobilizer of the policy framework for the SDGs, even non-government stakeholders have taken on the responsibility for the agenda and delivering the services to the rights holders. As Dr. Raymond Tan mentioned in his welcome remarks, he emphasized that De La Salle University is very much engaged in the SDG process. 
So I mentioned the, the NEDA, the National Economic and Development Authority, as the primary agency that is steering the process for SDG integration in the development planning process. In 2018, NEDA came out with the Joint Memorandum Circular with the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, which is the uh, coordinating agency, uh, regulatory agency for local government units in the Philippines. So this is the start of the localization process, the institutionalization of localization efforts for the SDGs. Because under this Joint Memorandum Circular Number 1, Series of 2018, all officials of local government units are hereby authorized to localize the Philippine Development Plan, Results Matrices, and the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs. Now let me talk a bit now on the Engage University before I go to the localization process, the localization of the SDGs. Because my topic is uh, about connecting the knowledge partnerships spearheaded by the university with the key stakeholders in the SDGs and the localization process. So, we anchor this knowledge partnership in the notion of the engaged university. In 2005, Tufts University con convened the Talawan Conference, which gathered universities committed to the goal of expanding higher education, civic engagement programs through teaching, research, and public service. So the three main pillars of the university. So in the Philippines, we use, uh, instead of public services, we use community engagement. Or in the case of state universities and colleges, the term community extension is used. Here in De La Salle University, we use community engagement, but that also incorporates the idea of public service. So the Taluan network of engaged universities was formed and the network has grown to 247 members, including De La Salle University. The network, the Talawa network is present in 62 countries. So having given you an idea of what I really mean by knowledge partnerships, the role of the university in uh, the development process, let me now go to uh, a specific project because uh, I really mean this uh, presentation to be about the case study, a case study of a university, and that university is De La Salle University that is engaged in public service or community engagement and in uh, uh, partnering with various stakeholders for sustainable development. So let me uh, present to you first a major project called Institutionalizing Joint Civil Society Government Monitoring of Public Service Delivery to the Poor. This happened from 2010 to 2013. I remember at the time, uh, the year before that, uh, 2009, uh, the president of De La Salle University at the time was uh, Brother Armin Luistro. Uh, asking for a meeting uh, because the World Bank uh, approached De La Salle University to be a partner in a project called uh, Institutionalizing Joint Monitoring of Public Services to the Poor. So this, uh, uh, this was the result of that uh, partnership with the World Bank uh, together with the Department of Finance of the Philippine government. So this uh, project really uh, was meant to enhance the capacity of civil society and government to undertake joint monitoring of public service delivery, especially to the poor through the development of knowledge partnerships with local universities. 
I just uh, got this from the web page of the De La Salle University, Jesse M. Robredo Institute of Governance, which eventually became the project lead of this uh, whole of university project because it really started as uh, a whole of university project. Uh, uh, Brother Armin invited the different research centers I was part of the initiation or the, the initial conceptualization of the project uh, that was in late 2009, but uh, I, I was offered a, a fellowship at the time because it happened to be my sabbatical year the following year in 2010. So as Dr. Kulaba introduced me earlier, I was a fellow for one year at Florida State University. So I was not uh, part of the, while well, I was part of the conceptualization of the project, I, I was not the project leader on during the first year of the project. And also at the time, uh, the Jesse Robredo Institute of Governance, Governance was then known as the La Salle Institute of Governance. But when I returned from Florida State University, I uh, became the project leader of, of this uh, a major uh, initiative. So the concept is really meant to uh, come up with a multi-stakeholder knowledge partnership involving uh, the university uh, in charge of knowledge management, civil society organizations in charge of monitoring, public services delivery, local government units and the national government agencies uh, also as a partner of the local government units uh, of course more than the partner they provide oversight because local government units are actually sub-national units of the government so they uh, are vertically integrated to national government agencies but uh, what is very critical in the process of uh, public service delivery is the monitoring uh, process because uh, the discussion at the time was that uh, there is a budget, there are good plans, uh, the country is very rich in, uh, in policies, in law, but quite poor in implementation. So it was seen that implementation problems occur because of the lack of transparency and accountability. So uh, open uh, government uh, participatory monitoring is seen as a very good intervention in terms of fostering performance and enabling good service delivery. So knowledge partnership is uh, seen as, uh, as a, uh, a critical intervention in this process. So this uh, happened uh, all over the country. So there were several sites. Uh, eight local government units were selected uh, purposively in order to give a good uh, uh, scan of the landscape. Uh, what uh, De La Salle University did was to sign a memorandum of, of understanding with uh, uh, reg what we term as regional universities because they uh, are based in the various regions of the country. St. Paul University, Philippines, that's in Northern Luzon, Bicol University in Southern Luzon, Siliman University in Central Visayas, Central Philippine University in Western Visayas, the University of San Carlos also in Central Visayas and Mindanao State University uh, specifically the General Santos, uh, Jensan campus in Southern Mindanao. And uh, the project also part partnered in the different project areas with civil society organizations. You can see this list of civil society organizations. So the idea is really to build the capacity of civil society organizations to do the monitoring. But uh, the important role of the university is really to do the capacity building, uh, to uh, engage the civil society organizations in the learning process. So uh, 
what De La Salle University did was to do an inventory of different uh, monitoring tools, monitoring initiatives. They classified the monitoring initiatives and tools according to the project development cycle or the policy cycle uh, where you have uh, planning uh, and budgeting and uh, implementation processes. So we uh, came out with uh, came out with a stock taking report. So uh, I'll just give you snapshots of uh, key results from the different project areas. So this was the presentation made by our project partner, uh, Professor Rufa Guillaume from uh, Mindanao State University and the project. Uh, so there are uh, local projects uh, and the university, uh, our partner university engaged with the civil society organizations and the local government units. And in this case, it's the municipality of Malungon in Sarangani province and the project that was selected was monitoring uh, water sanitation and hygiene or WASH. It's actually a national project, but it's uh, locally implemented. So an action research was undertaken. Uh, so you see here faculty from the uh, Mindanao State University uh, interviewing children in the uh, public school there. The local monitoring team was trained by Mindanao State University. So it's a partnership between Mindanao State University and the civil society organizations to monitor whether the WASH project is being implemented well. But uh, lo and behold, WASH project is supposed to uh, encourage students to wash their hands to uh, exhibit proper hygiene, but what did they found out? They found out that there was no water supply in the project site. So because of the action research, policy action was undertaken because during the validation workshop, the municipal government of Malungon committed to allocate funds for the provision of water supply for the WASH project. So you, you now see the very uh, fine contribution of this knowledge partnership. Uh, because there was the lack of water supply, what, uh, what the uh, in, uh, school did, the public school did, was to ask their students to bring these uh, bottles of water. As you see, these are uh, uh, soda, soda bottles, which they filled up with water so that they can still wash their hands and uh, observe proper hygiene because of the lack of water supply. But because of this action research, policy action was undertaken. And aside from providing funds to fix the water supply in the area, a proposal was made to draft an executive order or ordinance in the municipality to institutionalize the joint monitoring and evaluation for LGU funded projects in Malungon. So basically the very idea of the project was accepted by the local government units because there was evidence that uh, through action research and through the knowledge partnership, public services delivery would be uh, uh, more effective. A second uh, project uh, in this uh, program that I want to highlight was the monitoring of Pantawid Pamilya program in Lake Cebu in South Cotabato. As you can see, uh, this, uh, this is a municipality where a large portion of the population are from the indigenous communities. So uh, this is a uh, a young uh, faculty from Mindanao State University, Giovanni Espesor, who is now, uh, who recently finished his doctorate in New Zealand and is now a professor at Mindanao State University. So they, they're doing here uh, participatory mapping of uh, the resources. Let me just uh, talk a bit about Pantawid Pantawid Pamilya. 
A Pantawid Pamilya Program is a conditional cash transfer program where uh, families are provided cash assistance by the national government. For uh, families, the very poor families, uh, they're usually called the poorest of the poor, to enable them to provide uh, an allowance for their kids to uh, send them to school. So it's called conditional cash transfer because cash is transferred in exchange for uh, families sending their kids to school as well as uh, having their kids vaccinated. So it's a combination of education and health uh, conditionalities met that will enable them to receive uh, cash assistance. So what was the result of this action research? Uh, you can see on the left side of the screen, the local monitoring team, the joint local monitoring team, which is a combination of the national government, the SWD, the municipality of Lake Cebu in the province of South Cotabato and the coalition of civil society organizations, as well as uh, local universities, including Notre Dame of Marvel University, of course, with our major uh, knowledge partner, Mindanao State University. So similar to the previous local government unit that I discussed, in this case, uh, the municipality of Lake Cebu, as a result of seeing evidence from the action research, decided on these uh, uh, action points. Uh, because the joint monitoring project uh, found out that 19 barangays of Lake Cebu were enrolled in the conditional cash transfer program with only 4,322 beneficiaries out of 5,366 potential beneficiaries, meaning the total uh, universe is uh, more than 5,000 uh, families, but 20% of the families who are supposed to get the benefits from the uh, Pantawid Pamilya were not included. So what's the reason for this? It's, well, you know, uh, these are mountainous areas and uh, uh, at times the, uh, the, the team from the national government cannot really uh, go to the most remote barangays. So in the process, they are not able they were not able to survey some of the families that are, that are in the most uh, remote areas. So uh, community-based uh, uh, civil society or NGOs were able to identify these additional families that should be included in the uh, conditional cash transfer program or what we call the Pantawid Familia program. And what did the municipal mayor uh, decide to do? Uh, Lake Cebu Mayor Antonio Fungan signed Executive Order Number 25, Series of 2012, institutionalizing joint monitoring of public service delivery to the poor in the municipality of Lake Cebu province of South Cotabato. So a similar poli policy action from the previous case that I mentioned. So what did the what did the La Salle University produce in the process? We produce capacity development programs. I call these programs because they are different from each other. Uh, the programs were localized and customized. We had different partners, so our different partners produce uh, customized capacity development guides. Uh, we have an English version, but they have. Uh, versions in the local languages. So as you can see, even the design were different. Uh, the, the, our local partners uh, uh, contributed a lot in the design as well as in the content of these uh, capacity development guides. So we had uh, an event at De La Salle University. So this is the end of the project, uh, the presentation of knowledge products. And since we want this to be institutionalized, uh, the, uh, the project is really about institutionalizing the, uh, the project goals. And we saw how it was institutionalized in the local government unit. So we invited 
the secretary of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, uh, the late secretary Jesse M. Robredo, came to the university to receive the knowledge products. So you can see our president at the time was, was Brother Ricky Laguda. So Brother Ricky told me he was very happy to meet uh, uh, Secretary Robredo because Secretary Robredo uh, graduated from De La Salle University and a proud alumnus. So uh, it was very easy to invite uh, Secretary Robredo uh, to uh, attend all our uh, meetings and uh, in this case, the presentation of knowledge products, uh, he received it himself. And you see in the right side of this screen are pictures of our knowledge partners, uh, especially the team that work in the cases that I presented in Mindanao. So uh, Secretary Robredo also gave a, a, a speech in the policy forum where he said that uh, the products of uh, the project would be institutionalized and uh, would be integrated in the planning processes of the DILG. So this was two, two days before that tragic accident which happened where uh, Secretary Robredo died in a plane crash. So uh, he was uh, in our university just uh, two days before he died. And because of that uh, incident, uh, a few months after, uh, Brother Ricky uh, Laguda and also Brother Armin Luistro, who at that time was already the DepEd Education Secretary, uh, talked with uh, uh, the wife of the late Secretary Jesse Robredo to ask permission for the La Salle Institute of Governance to be renamed as the Jesse M. Robredo Institute of Governance. So the uh, La Salle Institute of Governance that uh, uh, spearheaded this uh, project uh, was renamed as the Jesse M. Robredo Institute of Governance. And also uh, a follow-up activity uh, because uh, the project that I discussed with you, the Knowledge Partnership was uh, supported by the World Bank. Uh, the, the new, uh, at the time, the uh, president was already Brother Ray Suplido, who succeeded Brother Ray Laguda. And uh, the DLSU Knowledge Development Center was created. So we have a small place there at, the, at our main library, at the Henry C. Hall. Uh, this is a product of this collaboration between the La Salle University and uh, the World Bank, where we have all these uh, knowledge products, including what we produce in the project in the Knowledge Development Center. So by then, uh, uh, the, uh, the wife of the late secretary was already a congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman Lenny Robredo. And she, in fact, is now the vice president of the Philippines. So. You see the signing here of the Memorandum of Understanding to establish the Knowledge Development Center. So now I jump, uh, I'm now inching into my main discussion about the SDGs because what I did was to show you the power of knowledge partnerships. So basically uh, what I did was to reflect on the uh, results of the knowledge partnership. Uh, that uh, project that I discussed uh, is very significant. It uh, took us three years and it took us three presidents, of, uh, three presidents of De La Salle University, Brother Armin, Brother Ray, and uh, Brother Ray Laguda and Brother Ray Suplido. So I mentioned a while ago that I uh, had a sabbatical in Florida State University. That was in 2010. And then I did this project that I just finished discussing. And then I had another sabbatical. Uh, this time I went to Osaka University School of International Public Policy. That was in 2019. And so I reflected on uh, 
what I've been doing over several years already on knowledge partnerships on and on uh, partnerships with uh, local government units on localization processes. So here uh, in this uh, slide, you can see a panel discussion with uh, a former Dean uh, Hoshino of Osaka University. Uh, I say former Dean because uh, he was Dean of Osaka University when he was appointed by the Japanese government to, be, to become a uh, deputy ambassador to the United Nations of uh, a deputy ambassador of Japan to the United Nations. So here we were discussing in a panel about the localization of SDGs. In fact, uh, before the this uh, forum, uh, Ambassador Hoshino was asking me about the localization process, the SDG localization process in the Philippines. So I told him that preliminary steps were taken, but then uh, there uh, is still no concept of an SDG city or an SDG county or province. So I got a lot of good uh, inputs from Ambassador Hoshino who's, who told me that in Japan, they have a very strategic program where every four years they develop uh, cities, uh, the term he used is future cities uh, to uh, incorporate the SDGs in their planning process. So I, I told him uh, when I go back to the Philippines, I will start the SDG city concept. So I started using the concept of SDG city, where, it, where as in Japan, they use the concept future city. That's why when I came back uh, to Manila, I developed a concept note called Making Manila an SDG City. And uh, the concept note I prepared, so I came back uh, the last quarter of uh, 2019 and I, uh, I uh, talked with brother Bernie Oka, the chancellor of De La Salle University. And we went to, uh, at the time, uh, Mayor Isco Moreno just won uh, uh, his first term as the mayor of the city of Manila. He used to be the vice mayor of the city of Manila. So we thought that uh, we have a community engagement project with several barangays or village. Uh, barangays are village governments in the Philippines. We have a partnership agreement. Uh, we do co our community engagement with the seven barangays. Uh, but in Manila, in the city of Manila, there are there are 800 barangays. So we thought that uh, we probably need to elevate our community engagement by going to the mayor himself. So uh, what I will be discussing in the next few slides would be the uh, briefing I did with uh, Mayor Isco Moreno, uh, the content of the briefing uh, that I did. Uh, uh, but before I do that, uh, after that briefing with uh, Mayor Isco Moreno, I had uh, meetings with the United Nations Development Program in Manila. And uh, if you look at this guy in the center of the screen, uh, he's uh, Dr. Andrew Parker. And he became a good friend of mine ever since our World Bank project. Because uh, when we, are, we were doing the project that I discussed, uh, earlier, the World Bank project, he was actually the chief economist of the World Bank in Manila. And he was, in fact, the person who approached Brother Armin Luistro to do the project. So I, uh, I presented to, to him the, the idea behind the SDG City concept. And he said that we should do it and we should launch it in 2020, in early 2020. But... Uh, uh, of course, we know what happened, and uh, I uh, further developed the concept by presenting uh, before the Commission on Higher Education. After all, we're talking about knowledge partnerships. So, uh, because my idea of uh, an SDG city Manila would involve the creation of university towns all over the city of Manila, not just around De La Salle University, but I, I would divide uh, 
Manila into South Manila, where De La Salle University is uh, is uh, anchored in. Is in fact there is a South Manila University Consortium and Old Manila. So the pandemic happened, the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, while we wanted to have a memorandum of understanding with the city of Manila, in 2020, the pandemic happened. But all throughout the period, uh, the early part of the COVID-19 crisis, De La Salle University, through to its uh, uh, service to the community open its doors to the homeless uh, people in Manila. So you have this uh, screenshot from a report from uh, ABS-CBN News about uh, our campus opening our uh, facilities to the homeless. Uh, through the CADA UNO initiative of De La Salle Philippines, we also open our campus to the uh, medical frontliners of Hospital ng Manila. So it was at this time that I uh, I reconnected with Brother Armin Luistro. In fact, uh, prior to the pandemic, we were together in the uh, Sustainable Development Solutions Network National Council. So I showed you a picture earlier of uh, the uh, arrival in the Philippines in 2015 of Professor Jeffrey Sachs, who is the advisor for the SDGs of the United Nations Secretary General, and Brother Armin, uh, as president of the Philippine Business for Social Progress, sits also in the National Council. So we often see each other in meetings. So I, uh, I, I shared with him the idea of the SDG city. And, and so Brother Armin was encouraging me to uh, just focus on the anti-hunger provision or the anti-hunger target of SDG. Uh, so this is part of the Kada Uno initiative. Uh, so uh, for a time we were thinking really of just focusing on the anti-hunger campaign. Uh, until uh, Vice President for La Salian Mission, uh, Fritzi De Vera, uh, messaged me uh, in Facebook that uh, because uh, Brother Armin also shared the concept note to uh, Fritzi about the SDG City. So from then on, uh, I think it was because uh, Fritz, uh, Vice President Fritzi De Vera was asked by the Board of Trustees to have a more comprehensive community engagement program. So we started reviving our conversations with uh, Mayor Isco Moreno on the SDG city concept. So we had, uh, because it, it is in pandemic times, uh, I, I remember at the time uh, the city of Manila wanted us to come to City Hall to discuss, but I told him uh, we can do it by Zoom. So we had this meeting with uh, the team from the City of Manila and uh, the team organized by uh, uh, our Vice President uh, for La Salian Mission, Fritzi De Vera. So it came very quickly because uh, the city uh, mayor was actually uh, uh, all, already uh, willing to sign the MOU uh, he still remembered our meeting a year ago that he wanted to sign already the MOU, but then the pandemic arrived. So it came very quickly. So we had an MOU signing at the Manila City Hall on November 18, 2020. So uh, a few months ago. So originally we wanted to have a Zoom uh, signing, a Zoom meeting signing, but uh, the uh, Manila City Hall team asked us to have uh, at least uh, witnesses. So Vice President Fritzi was able to convince me to go to the City Hall. So it's a face-to-face -face, uh, signing, but then our uh, President, uh, Brother Ray, and our Chancellor, uh, Brother Bernie, were uh, joined the signing through Zoom. So under the partnership agreement, the MOU would be effective until the end of Mayor Moreno's term in June 2022 with provisions for negotiating an extension. 
uh, an executive assistant for special projects, former Councillor Joy Davis Asuncion was appointed. So it means that this is serious business. So Business Mirror pick up the story and they release uh, a, a news item about the partnership, the LSU local governments to partner to make Manila a sustainable urban center. So I'm using the co-production process from uh, uh, Nobel laureate Eleanor Ostrom, 2009, uh, the late professor of political science who emphasized that co-production implies that citizens can play an active role in producing public goods and services. So co-production in the localization of the sustainable development goals involving multi-stakeholder engagement, the very process I mentioned in the early part. So this is the uh, framework uh, for collective action. So on the demand side, you have academe, civil society organizations, private sector, and government on the supply side, working together. So on the government side, a whole of government approach and a whole of society approach on the part of the key stakeholders. Uh, later on, I'll talk about the whole of university approach with the very idea of helping develop programs, activities, and projects to realize the SDGs. How to integrate the SDGs into local governance would include an analysis of existing databases in the city and make a comparison with the SDG indicators, strengthening institutional capacities through workshops and training of various actors to operationalize SDGs and to, to co-produce programs, projects, and activities to attain SDG targets. So there will be an SDG Watch Manila it's very nice that we have the community-based monitoring system based at Telesal University that we can use to look at the various uh, uh, indicators and the data that has been gathered to look at the indicators on uh, the community-based monitoring system was originally set up to monitor uh, MDGs, but now it will be transitioned into SDGs, especially with our SDG City project. Of course, uh, CBMS has been uh, recognized uh, and it has become a law, in fact, the use of uh, the CBMS. So I'll be, uh, will, the project will be using, the SDG City Manila project will be using uh, the, uh, the tool actually generated through the DILG NEDA memorandum circular. So we will look at objectives and results, uh, Philippine SDG, uh, because certainly not all the SDGs would be applicable. So we would be selecting uh, uh, SDGs that are relevant to the Philippines, but at the same time, uh, by localizing, we mean the relevant SDG targets for the city of Manila. So how it will be integrated in the annual planning of the city of Manila, uh, looking at the evidence, we'll have means of verification and data sources. So as I mentioned, we'll establish an SDG City University Consortium. As I told you, there are 800 barangays in the city of Manila. So we will be dividing uh, university engagement. So it's not just De La Salle University that will be involved in this project, but we will partner with our peer uh, universities. So similar to the project I told you earlier, while we were doing community engagement outside Manila, uh, previously we were going to the provinces, we were helping local government units outside Metro Manila I think it's about time that we help our city of Manila itself because we are right in the heart of the city. So we have a hashtag university town, hashtag SDG city. Eventually we want the city of Manila to be a model city. And our SDG city hashtag would be a representation of our commitment to connect every province, city and town into the global SDG platform. Because when I uh, started putting up uh, photos about the meetings in the city of Manila, many city uh, officials in various, uh, various parts of the country messaged me asking, uh, sir, 
can we be part of this SDG City program? So I said, uh, of course, nobody should be left behind, but uh, let's look at how the city of Manila would uh, work uh, as a proof of concept. So leave nobody behind. So in these uh, Facebook messages sent to me by my friends from the local government units, they said, sana all. So I, I told them, uh, certainly we will leave no one behind. So these are the main uh, activities, uh, research data, inventory and assessment. So I'm working very closely with the vice president for La Salian mission on this process. And uh, uh, Vice President Fritz is also communicating this with the Board of Trustees about the plans on SDG prioritization, module development, capacity building, technology co-production and project development, policy engagement and monitoring and evaluation. So uh, what we want to achieve at the end of this process, maybe not the end of the process, but uh, the early part of the process is to have a voluntary local review, uh, a voluntary local review to be uh, presented by the city of Manila before the United Nations. Right now, uh, what we have in the Philippines is a national, is a voluntary national review. It is a report prepared by the National Economic and Development Authority. There is no local government unit that has produce a voluntary local review. Hopefully Manila would be the first through this project. So uh, a whole of university approach is something that we want to pursue if the project will be successful. So I got this uh, screenshot from the Journal of Education for Sustainable Development, a very good article. It's called Developing a Whole of university approach to educating for sustainability. So the strategic approach therefore would be a whole of government, whole of society and a whole of university. Uh, we are in the early process of data inventory and stakeholder mapping starting with the university. Uh, as you can see in, the, uh, in this matrix, you have uh, the relevant SDGs. So far we, we have talked with the number of uh, our uh, research centers and our units within De La Salle University, but this is just the start of the process. Uh, I, I already uh, have meetings set for the other uh, institutes, other research centers, but uh, just an initial inventory and the init <laughs> initial meetings with our vice president for La Salle Mission. We have LC, COSCA, and because I've been working with the SIGWA group for quite some time now. Uh, so SIGWA uh, is something that I think is very important to be co-produced within the city of Manila, the local weather forecasting system. A presentation was made uh, before me by uh, young faculty from the College of Computer Studies on visualization tools for disaster risk reduction and management. So. Uh, uh, my friend, Dr. Neil Lopez, uh, also presented the Smart and Sustainable Transport Project for Philippine cities, looking at uh, the smart transport mobility and uh, the LCID, the uh, Social Enterprise uh, Project. So we have a tentative timetable uh, because we're operating in pandemic times. Uh, th this tends to be a really uh, moving target so uh, all the activities I showed you earlier, I put this up in a time frame. So what we want to do is to have an initial uh, web page, uh, creating an SDG City Manila page. And because the city of Manila is requesting us to also design the web page that can be linked with them since this is a co-produced undertaking. Hopefully, uh, the project will have a house in an SDG lab or possibly in a sustainability institute. Uh, this was discussed earlier by Dr. Raymond Tan uh, because uh, I think this is a big project. Again, similar to the World Bank, I think even bigger than the World Bank project that I discussed a while ago. 
uh, thank you very much. I took up a lot of your time. So uh, I give it back to our uh, moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Magno, for that excellent and comprehensive uh, presentation of a very specific uh, you know, localization case study, uh, particularly where De La Salle University is situated you know, in the city of Manila. I would like to uh, just uh, acknowledge the presence of, of course, Chancellor Emeritus uh, Carmelita Quebenco here, and of course, our uh, Vice President for La Salle Mission, Fisi de Vera. I will now um, you know, transfer the floor to uh, Dr. Kathleen Aviso for the question and answer portion. So thank you, uh, Kiko, and of course, to our participants. I leave it to Dr. Aviso now. Thank you and thank good morning. You. Thank you very much, Dr. Kulaba, and thank you very much, Dr. Magna, for your um, lecture. Now we open the floor for any questions from our audience. Okay, maybe I'll start it up. So I think that uh, this is a very good uh, initiative. So maybe one of my questions would be, since the SDG goals are very diverse and there, there's really a lot of things that you'd want to target on, what would be the, what do you think would be most critical and what would be the main priority um, in the projects that you're getting involved in? Uh, thank you, Kay. Uh, that's a very good question because uh, there are so many SDGs. In fact, uh, I told you that the national government, uh, NEDA, uh, with uh, the Philippine Statist Statistics Authority, or PSA, has limited also the targets to what is uh, relevant. So uh, similarly, in the city of Manila, we are uh, targeting those that are most relevant. And uh, since it's a co-produced undertaking, the our university and the board of trustees uh, has expressed interest in certain targets. Uh, I mentioned a while ago that the anti-poverty program, uh, because we have a Kada Uni initiative, uh, feeding program, that's uh, a main target. And uh, uh, some members of the board of trustees, I think have expressed interest in uh, a socialized housing program. Of course, that's a big ticket project. Uh, it has to go through a lot of discussions. So uh, I showed you a few potential project. Uh, we also have to look at what we have produced. So I showed you some examples uh, like SIGWA and the smart uh, mobility project of, in fact, SESDAR, right? Uh, but there are more. Uh, uh, because of the uh, anti-hunger project, the Food Institute uh, through Mel uh, Garcia has already approached me and we will have, we'll set a meeting for that purpose. So initially those are the initial uh, SDG uh, uh, goals, but I, I think there should be more as we go through an inventory of what we have. Uh, so, uh, that's a long answer to your, your question. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, we have a question uh, from Dr. Raymond Tan. So what measures can be taken to ensure that SDG initiatives survive the political term transitions? Yes, uh, that's, yeah, that's uh, always the question asked uh, because uh, Mayor Isko might run as president. But uh, of course, we want him to stay on as uh, mayor of Manila. Maybe he can run in not in the election next year, but in the succeeding election. But uh, certainly, uh, we don't know what will happen uh, after 2022. Uh, initially, uh, I, uh, Fritzi and I discussed, and uh, I, I wrote in the draft MOU up to 2025. But then uh, the uh, the point person in the city of Manila saw the document and said, uh, we cannot commit the mayor up to 2025 because he would not be the mayor at the time or we don't know if he would be the mayor. So in order to address this, we would also be uh, doing policy engagement with the councillors, uh, also with the vice mayor because the vice mayor, in fact, uh, convinced the council, the city council and is, uh, and, and you know, the council does the budgeting for the city of Manila. The other uh, policy actors that we want to engage with would be 
uh, representatives from Congress. There are six uh, Congress persons, and because they they engage in the national budget, and uh, because it's a co-produce process, uh, national government certainly would be involved. So to ensure that there would be continuity, we will we will engage as well with NEDA. So these are uh, institutions that will continue on. And in the city of Manila, we will engage with the career officials, with the planning officers, with the disaster management officers. So we would do capacity building. And we will also engage with the uh, Universidad de Manila and the Pamantasa ng Manila. They are the local uh, government universities to ensure that uh, there would be sustainability. So there are various uh, channels for sustainability. Thank you for that. So the next one comes from Professor uh, Biswajit Sarkar. So thank you for your excellent lecture. So he is from Yonsei University in South Korea, and he would like to know the major difficulties that you have faced during your SDG project for local applications. Uh, of course, we. Uh, the most difficult actually is, uh, well, uh, my general experience in, for many local government units, it's really convincing the mayor. Uh, there have been times before that I, I did a courtesy call with previous mayors, uh, but uh, this is the different mayor because uh, even though it was the first time that he heard of uh, SDGs, uh, he said, that's really a good idea and we should do it immediately. So uh, therefore that's not the difficulty at all. Although in general, that should be a difficulty. So for other local government units, it may, be, it may not be the same reception. But the, the thing here is we want uh, Manila to be a kind of a model. And we, we all know also the capacity of the Manila mayor to influence others. After all, Manila is the political capital and Manila is the, I would say Manila is the education capital. Although our friends on the other side of Metro Manila might disagree, but, uh, but certainly it's the political capital. Uh, my reason for being uh, saying it's an education capital is, is the sheer volume of university in this area. Uh, again, a long introduction to the answer, but the main answer is funding. That's the Thank main you. challenge. All right. So the next question comes from Dr. Jonah Bakilias. So how does our university, uh, how do the university efforts concretely help the city of Manila and the Philippines to get closer to meeting the SDG targets? So what measures and tools are being used to ensure that we are on track? given that we only have about nine years left until 2030. How, do you see our country uh, meeting, sorry, meeting the targets by then? Okay, it's very hard to answer. I, I think the, the answer to that might be provided better by NEDA because NEDA is the one really in charge of the national uh, effort to meet the targets. Uh, but uh, I think uh, with this project, we would show a kind of model. Uh, the uh, localization will help the national government. It will help NEDA in, uh, in doing uh, good, uh, uh, good action plans as well as in, uh, in producing a good uh, voluntary national review because uh, the, the voluntary national review, that's the report on attainment of SDG targets. Uh, sometimes they don't, uh, they are not able to get all the information, all the types of uh, activities that are being undertaken in SDG localization. So if we can show that the city of Manila is able to do a database uh, management, uh, monitoring of SDG uh, programs, activities and projects, sometimes uh, these uh, activities are being undertaken but they are not reported. So I think uh, the value of our engagement as a knowledge partner is to help the city of Manila report on their achievements. And if this can be done in Manila, this can be done by other uh, local governments. And we, 
you know, there are 1,500 local governments in the country, not to mention 42,000 barangays. So if it becomes a whole of government approach, I think we could uh, really support that process. But certainly uh, it will all depend on the steps to be taken. Uh, there are nine years. Uh, of course, it's a tough goal meeting the 2030 targets in nine years, but uh, of course we need to rise from this pandemic, but uh, we can perhaps uh, make much more progress if we build back uh, better, we build back smarter, and we build back greener. Thank well, you, uh, green, of course, is our Lasalle color, <laughs> green and white, but it's also the color of sustainability. Yes. So the next question comes from Jose Marie Gonzalez. So um, good morning. Uh, I think it's from Benilde. So commendations to a very insightful discourse. I would like to ask your insights on the process of localizing the definition of sustainability before initiating any plans to implement sustainable development in our country and provinces. Of course, I uh, mentioned uh, that uh, it will be a process of co-production. So even the terms that we use, uh, we translate it. Uh, into our needs, uh, translate even the language to be used. Uh, we, we were discussing with the group, our group with Fritzi, uh, what hashtags do we use? Uh, is, is there uh, a Filipino equivalent uh, in the language of SDGs? Of course, uh, the, this is a work in progress. Uh, we will have to define it uh, in a co-production mode. We would have to co-create our vision of the future. Uh, we have to localize, uh, incorporating the inputs from various stakeholders. So uh, it will be a multi-stakeholder process, even the process of defining the targets. That is part of the process of localization. So uh, we don't define the, the, the terms for them. We engage with them in defining the, the terms of engagement. Otherwise, we become ivory tower in, in this process because precisely we do not want to leave anyone behind. Thank you. The next question comes from Dr. Anna Resurrection. So, hi, Dr. Kiko. I may be wrong, but I think I haven't noticed the city's competitiveness index as a consideration in the entirety of the plan. Okay. Uh, well, I, I probably was not able to include the... The, the competitive cities index, but uh, that's part of the slide on the database uh, management and using existing databases. Uh, maybe I uh, focus on CBMS because that's a product of De La Salle University uh, with, with PIDS and, uh, and certainly uh, all the different monitoring tools and all the different indices will be used. Uh, because this is a knowledge enterprise. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anna. Okay, the next one comes from Mr. Ray and Derek Marquez of DRRM. Uh, he is a division chief, Office of Civil Defense. So the question is, one of the sustainable development goals, particularly number 13, is about climate action. And one is, ah, okay, climate action. Hold on, uh, let me check. Sorry, sorry. I can check the other. Where is it? Okay. Climate action. Okay. The official wording is to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. The goal has targets to be achieved by 2030. Um, what, what are the climate change adaptation and DRRM projects in Manila that will be prioritized uh, so that these can be achieved by 2030? So Raymond is with the DRM office of Manila. So uh, yes. that's good. Uh, we already have here uh, uh, the actors for sustainability because they are in the office. No? I don't know if I've met Raymond before because we had several meetings previously. Rayan, Rayan Derek. Uh, Rayan, Rayan, yes. So uh, initially I uh, posted a screenshot of the SIGWA no? so because... Uh, we have very advanced technologies uh, developed uh, by our De La Salle University, uh, De La Salle University colleagues, the, the group of uh, Dr. Noni Santos and Dr. Edgar Valliar, no? uh, using uh, LIDAR. 
uh, uh, part of the Project NOAA, no? and, and you know Project NOAA is not continuing anymore. But the technology is there, so we can do localized weather forecasting. So in fact, I, I uh, discussed this with Mayor Isko, and uh, he said, uh, why don't we set up uh, sensors on top of uh, bay leaf? Because you know, bay leaf is, uh, is part of Lyceum University. So uh, he's very open to setting up these uh, sensors. It's a kind of internet of things operation. So as you, as you know, the suspension of uh, classes is uh, done by the city mayor. It's a localized uh, decision-making process. So we need, uh, through this uh, process, so this is a very specific uh, process, it will be evidence-based. Uh, so uh, considering the rainfall patterns and uh, and certainly if we can do this uh, visualization of uh, flooding, uh, possible flooding occurrences. So the suspension can happen by district or by uh, area instead of the entire city. So these are some of the permutations in terms of decision-making. So uh, perhaps also uh, maybe we can address also storm surge because we had storm surge in the past. So as uh, part of the climate adaptation plan and this, uh, this has to be a whole of government approach. So it may also have to deal with uh, 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 using sensors in uh, buildings, having smart buildings uh, having seismic uh, sensors, uh, the earthquake uh, uh, resilience of buildings, because when we talk of disasters, it's not just typhoons, but also earthquakes. So uh, this has to be related to building permits, uh, building codes, and uh, building inspection. So there are many things that can be addressed. Uh, Thank you for that. So the next question comes from Dr. James Burke. Uh, so thank you so much for a comprehensive overview of De La Salle's creative, innovative, and uh, leadership projects. Just to dig in further to previous questions, does the SDG city model allow for periodic stakeholder prioritization of SDGs? So for example, would local communities throughout the 800 barangays participate in the periodic SDG pr prioritization? Uh, thank you, James. Uh, very good question uh, because it, it has to do with planning. Uh, so uh, we have to uh, also follow the, the policy flow. So every local government unit has an annual uh, uh, planning, annual budgeting process. So we want uh, through this SDG city engagement, we want to uh, institutionalize strong participatory mechanisms. I've been engaged in the open budget survey of the national government and uh, monitoring uh, participatory mechanisms. But uh, certainly in the local government level, LGU level, uh, the SDG city uh, multi-stakeholder engagement mechanism uh, is something that can be incorporated in the process. The earlier question about the challenge, I think this is uh, a key challenge because uh, uh, many participatory processes are uh, maybe on paper or there is a lot of tokenism uh, in the ladder of participation. So we want to make this work. So uh, there should also be participatory processes uh, in the inter-university consortium. So uh, by engaging with the different LGUs, they can also help people develop skills in participation uh, because it's not just a matter of being good at heart, uh, having a good heart, uh, wanting to participate, but uh, once you are on the table to participate, uh, what do you do? So you need to have knowledge of the budget process, of the planning process. Uh, we might know the content, no, we might now know the content. We, we want we know our advocacy, but if we do not know the process, the channels for engagement. So uh, the answer to James is uh, there is an annual process in the local government unit level, uh, even at the barangay level, because they have funds. 
before you can uh, use your funds, you need to have a plan. So you, we can integrate these uh, participatory processes into the plans. But even before we integrate, uh, we engage with local government, we need to engage with our, our own communities, with our own university, with the different stakeholders. So we need to have uh, meetings, planning meetings, uh, participatory workshops. Of course, it's a great undertaking, but uh, th yeah. those are the things that are needed. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one comes from Timothy de Canai. So he's from the Benilde School of Design and Arts. So he wants to know your views on the role of culture and the arts in the SDG City Manila. Actually, we're, we're talking a lot about Benilde because they have a school, school of arts and design. Because the culture is at the heart of the SDGs. Uh, we want to have a sustainable city. We want to have a, a city with the heart and with the arts, with the heart and the arts. So certainly uh, uh, we want to partner. Uh, I think we had a good number of discussions with the, the team of uh, uh, Vice President Fritzi that we need the support of the uh, Benil, the School of Design. And, and certainly there are a lot of uh, uh, other uh, departments in the other universities. They have depart, uh, architecture programs in, in other schools, but we also have one in Benil. So we, we want to uh, incorporate arts and culture. Thank you for that. So the next question comes from Carlos Hacilito Gutierrez. And I think that this is a question that's in the mind of everyone here. So do you already have a website for your SDG City project where they can actually see updates and maybe they can get in touch with you if they want to get involved with, involved with the project, if they want to volunteer, or if their organizations would be interested in partnering in this initiative? Okay, uh, I think that's the main challenge for me right now because as I told you when I came back from my sabbatical, uh, I became uh, a fellow of my former institute that I manage, but I uh, actually am, am focusing on writing uh, in my individual capacity. But since uh, there is a need to engage again as uh, our part of our Lasallian mission for community engagement, uh, to be a resource for God and country, uh, the, the challenge for uh, us right now is to really build a good uh, staff support system. And hopefully, uh, my proposal is to have an SDG lab. And uh, in discussions with Dr. Raymond Tan, we, we, before the pandemic, we were talking about a sustainability institute. But uh, a website is possible. In fact, I, I uh, already uh, proposed that to have a website by March. But uh, yes, I, I also need content developers. Maybe uh, we can have a number of volunteers from our students, our grad students as well. And maybe our friends from our De La Salle, uh, La Salle uh, schools from various countries. Yeah. So to provide you. also content. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I want to have an advisory council for the SDG City project. Uh, because I think in uh, various uh, countries, there are SDG city, uh, related SDG City pro projects, although the name might be different. As I told you, in Japan, it's a future cities project. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, we can co-produce uh, these things. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Dr. Magda. And, and I suppose we can have something, at least in the main DLSU website, to look at the updates of the project, which can you know, direct us towards that, um, that web page once it becomes developed. I think also, Kay, uh, the sustainable, uh, sustainability series, I think, provides a lot of content. And, and uh, Cesdar, you're the host of this series. Uh, Cesdar has been... Uh, a very a very good partner and uh, maybe you can supply also warm bodies for this effort yeah 
So thank you. So the next is just a comment from uh, Mr. Emmanuel Afable. So yeah, so he thinks that the challenge of LGU funding for 2022 will be addressed from the increased IRA budget next year and the challenges of absorptive capacity will need to be prioritized more. So he agrees with you to closely work with Manila City Council to provide technical assistance and SDG planning implementation covering all the bases of future LGU leaders that may come next. Um, the next uh, can is, I, yes, I say may, something? That, yes. That's a very good insight from Emmanuel. Actually, that's true. Local government units are supposed to receive uh, additional funding because of the ruling from the Supreme Court that uh, for so many years, uh, local governments are not receiving uh, the appropriate internal revenue allotment. So in fact, national governments are saying that local government units should be more responsible really in attaining SDGs because of greater greater budget after 2022. Let me just check. Getting some. There we go. All right. So the next one is okay. I'll just um, ask a few more questions because we need to wrap up soon. So the next one is from Dr. Ronaldo Pante. So how can the local government like the city of Manila apply sustainability principles in their operations in terms of informal settlers? So how visible is the centralization in Manila? Okay. Uh, uh, what I heard from Mayor uh, Isko Moreno is that he is very active in, uh, in fact, I, I see also in um, in the media that uh, there are a number of socialized housing programs for informal settlers. So uh, it's not a doll out, but uh, uh, it's also building the capacity of the homeless, uh, our homeless uh, citizens in Manila to invest in their own uh, housing. So there are uh, government programs available as socialized housing. Uh, th this is something that in, uh, I've heard from uh, the Board of Trustees, uh, certain members, some members of the Board of Trustees wanting that the university should be engaged in some kind of socialized housing at uh, a level that uh, it has to be discussed as well. Okay, thank you for that, Dr. Magno. So just a comment from Dr. Carmelita Quebenco. So if you want to send an invitation to our different LaSalle universities throughout the world to form some kind of collaboration on the implementation of SDGs in their respective countries, so kindly email her so that she can thank help you. facilitate it. Thank you, Lita. Okay, so there are so that's, many... That's very good, okay, because as I, I told you, it, this is an international program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm that we are localizing. So we can, we need all the help we can get from our Lasallian partners all over the world. Okay, there are so many other questions, but I for, unfortunately we need to wrap up soon. Dr. Magno, is it possible for us to, um, maybe I can, we can get your contact and can some of our participants email you if they're uh, interested to get more feedback regarding your updates yes. um, with the project. And, can you also share with us a copy of your PowerPoint presentation so that yes. I can send it also to our participants? Thank you, Kay. Uh, I'll share it with you. Thank you so much. So thank you everyone for coming today. But before we end, I would like to share with you our um, lecture for the next series. So the next series will be on March 24, 2021 at 8 a.m., same schedule as today. Um, Philippine Standard Time. So if you're interested, please register at bit.ly DLSU03. And that's there's the QR code there. So our speakers would be Dr. Uh, Patrick Ab Abulensha and Dr. Pamela Shasek, both from Manhattan College. So I do hope that you guys can uh, uh, attend again in our uh, seminar. Okay. So... Thank you very much. So I'll be closing the session now. Thank you once again for joining us this morning. And I hope that you join us again on March 24 for our next speakers. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for all our participants. Thanks, Kiko. Nice talk. Thank you. Raymond, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you all next month. See you all next month, yes. <laughs>